Hello, hello, hope you're all having a good day. My name is Peter, I'm an adults beginner violinist here in London. It's currently raining in London, which is pretty old news for anyone who lives here. So in this video, I'm going to be learning the piece Concerto in A Maya by Vivaldi. So I've been learning this piece for a while now with my private tutor and as an adult beginner, it is very, very difficult for me. I've asked my Instagram followers if they wanted me to make this video where I'm tackling these pieces and my, you know, my thought processes on when I'm actually learning pieces, especially as an adult beginner. And I actually got a pretty good response for it. So people were actually, you know, interested in watching this kind of video. So here we are. I hope you all enjoy this video of me learning this piece, me struggling with this piece. <laughs> but before I dive into practicing, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea. Now I know what you're thinking. That is like the most British thing to say but I like my tea, so what can I say? So I'm gonna make that first and then I'm gonna grab my violin. <laughs> By the way, this is Mabel, my little sausage doggy. Every time she sees that the violin comes out, she always wants this heater on here. You just always want that on, don't you? <laughs> Okay, so I'm learning the Suzuki edition of this piece. So this should be fun. Now I might not get through the whole piece, but I will try my best. There are certain areas which I find more difficult than others. So we'll see how far we get. The violin's already tuned off camera, so it should be good. Okay, here we go. Okay, maybe not my strongest strongest start on this. Um, I'm gonna try that again, but I'm just gonna try and think more musical about this. I don't know if it's the nerves from the camera. <laughs> um, but yes, let's try to put more musicality into it. but you know room for improvement as always see now these sections here where are we when we get back into these sections here so the reason why I was making yeah, that kind of face or that kind of gesture is my teacher always tried to make me imagine like I'm placing something in those sections so etc etc don't make me sing <laughs> i'm gonna try and play that passage again and just trying to imagine that a bit more you get the idea something like that moving on Now these sections here I find extremely difficult, the string crossing session. So I've asked my teacher this hundreds of times and she suggests I use a bit more martelé, especially that is written on the piece itself. So I should be using it. <laughs> Quicker bows, martelé, stop and then move to the next string. I'm basically trying to eliminate those kind of string crossing sounds something you don't really want to hear when you're playing these kind of pieces. You want to make it a lot more cleaner. Yeah, it could help with better intonation. It's 
that A, that low A. Bit better, but let's move on. See, that time I didn't think and it felt a lot better, which is what my teacher always tells me. Don't think, just do it. the wrong note <laughs> but this section is actually quite interesting to me because it's very wavy almost I don't know the word for that there's like a direction on here or shape I would say so you can see how the it crescendos and then diminuendos and crescendos and diminuendos everywhere during here and also marked dolce so you need to play that a lot more sweetly See now, I can see that the first notes of every semiquavers are accented, so I'm trying to make those stand out rather than those little middle noodly bits, which aren't as important. So, try my very best <laughs> um, to make those stand out. There's that infamous shift, which I really hate. Um, try my best to fix this, but um, the only way you can do this is just really to relax in the hands. See now, my teacher always emphasizes that I need to sing this in my head. That way my fingers kind of aim for that high note. Um, so I'm going to try and do that in my head. Okay, it's getting a bit clearer the more I'm relaxing and just going for it. So I'm going to try and do that and just carry on. There's a lot of um, direction that needs to lead up to this section here and I find quite difficult to do especially I find it quite uncomfortable to play fifths especially when one finger has to hold two notes at the same time so for example you can see here really difficult to I find difficult to get when you're in the flow of playing so I'm trying to learn how to you know, get better at doing that. So it feels a bit better slowing this down, so I'm going to try that a little bit more and then see how we go. Now, there's sections where I really need to use my fingers more of a guide, so notes that are, you know, a semitone apart. I really need to be right next to my fingers here to try and get those. Especially that last one, which is um, a very interesting D sharp. So, I'm trying to use my fourth finger right next to my third ring finger. hard on the ears but it's so important that you get that it's just a change of colour which is what I'm trying to establish yeah and also this is the part in pieces where you need to do kind of a more or less kind of thing 
So more on the first note and then less on the fall off. <laughs> anyway, let's try and move on. There's those blasted string crossings again. This is a really awkward part because I have to shift back again. I'm still learning how to shift cleanly in these pieces, um, but this is a good gradient for me. Mm, could do with um, a bit of a clean up, but let's carry on. my focus a little bit there but um but that's again the same part as the beginning of placing so I'm trying to trying to imagine that again Okay, well, 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 we need to stop. We need to stop playing so fast here. So a lot of tricky passages again. I've really struggled on this page, especially in my lessons. It's always the sections where I'm skipping past a string to the other. Now I spoke to my good friend on Instagram, um, Lily, who actually helped me with this. So she suggested that I um, practice just playing on the open strings and then trying to reach the other one without touching the string in between. So a few of these kind of things. something I need to train my hands to do a bit more. The elbow plays such a big role in this part. I remember struggling when I was playing this in my lessons because my I was playing too high in the bow and then this just forced me to work even harder for my elbow here you can see. Now we don't want that, we want dexterity in this. So it's just trying to play it somewhat, you know, somewhere that's easier for the elbow to just rock around the strings. See, what's really important sometimes I put this in my practice, like now, is just playing the difficult parts on open strings and that way just I don't have to think about the left hand as much. So I'm going to try a little bit of that and then we'll see where, where it takes me. See now, especially on this section here, I need to whip back round to the high, higher A on the E string. So I need to make sure that I'm there in time as well. Let's keep trying. Do I use more bow or less bow? Maybe less because it's quicker for me to get there. Note to self, play, stop, play. Okay, so let's just try put that in action. Need to be a bit quicker on the A, my finger wasn't there in time. Still not getting it. So okay, I got the fairly got the skip better coming down to the A, but coming back down to the high one is what I'm finding difficult. So what can I do? Let's try to break this down while playing the notes this time with my left hand. See how this takes me playing it slowly. Whip round. See now the scariest part is 
knowing if you've landed on that A or not <laughs> during the shift here. Um, so, and you just need to keep that in mind. Would have helped if I played the right notes. <laughs> Right, Mabel's just walked out the room, so I'm going to turn this heater off. There we go. Thanks, Lily. Yeah, I mean, that sounded a bit better, and it felt better as well. Again, not thinking, just playing. again. Yeah, this piece is, I find it so hard to keep your intonation together. So, uh, so I'll keep trying. Um, but it's definitely getting closer the more, the more I'm playing this. Moving on. Oh wow, like I just purposely played that without stopping. <laughs> just want, I wanted to see where it would take me um, just without thinking and just doing it. But then again, there's a lot of things I need to fix in this. So again, like I said at the beginning, musicality. This is the kind of, this is very familiar to the first page where we had the, um, the Dolce section here. So when I play this in my lesson, I can always get that part-ish. But then playing that on the last page, I tend to lose it a bit. I think it's because I'm, I'm just more concerned about getting the notes correct rather than thinking about the shape and just thinking about the um, direction of where this piece is taking me. I've been doing lots of metronome work, so that's been helping me get the notes correctly. But then again, it's just so much to these things, it's just like, Getting the first note of the semi quavers to stand out rather than the noodly middle bits because they're like the less important notes. But yeah, I'm going to try and play it a bit slower and just see if I can bring out a bit more, bit more shape to this part. That was okay, um, you know, uh, I'm always being so like self-critical about this stuff and um, I definitely want more to it, but you know, let's be a bit nicer to myself. I'm, I'm proud of it. There you go. Okay, um, things to talk about here. So I remember my teacher saying in my lesson that when we get back to a familiar section, we need to establish, oh yes, this is the piece, this is the part in the piece that we've heard before. So for example, when we hear the... Where are we? Well, oh, from on the page. This part here. I 
I need to give my, you know, my audience or whoever's listening. <laughs> you guys there, you guys listening. I need to establish that this is a part that we've heard before and be like, ah, oh, yes, we're here again. We're back to home base. And then it's different again. So when we get the next solo Dolce section, this part here, automatically is a different color, a different part and a different feeling. It's like, oh, so we're not like back to the beginning again. It's something a little bit new. So yeah, that kind of thing is going through my head when I'm playing this. So this part here is very... So you can see the crescendo coming up and then immediately you can see it's hitting a piano dynamic. So I need to show a bit more of that direction there. So this is the part I mean about re-establishing re the part we've played before to make it familiar to our audience that we're back again. Um, so how do I do that, saying that? So there's a crescendo leading up to a forte, which is a very, you know, a bold statement here. And it also says tutti, so I need to listen to the part again. I'm guessing that's where the orchestra comes back to play again. Could have been a bit more of a, you know, dramatic ending, but hey, here we go. More practice to be done. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Otherwise this video is gonna be way too long. And um, I hope I've, you know, entertained you in my little practice routine that I do. I mean, obviously I spend a lot more time doing this, but I don't wanna take any more of your precious time. This is kind of more me showing myself as an adult beginner learning this piece. Um, I know this is a very famous kind of, you know, book you play during your time learning, especially for adult beginners, actually. Uh, we've talked about like different kind of shapes and things. Obviously, there's a lot of room to improve um, for me anyway, personally. I've kind of shared some of the thought process that I go through when I'm learning these pieces, the things that I've, you know, the gestures like I was saying, placing something, placing something. These kind of things are just like constantly in my head. And I think it really does help when you're learning um, these kind of things just to see things from a different angle or just seeing things from a different perspective just really helps you just grasp a different idea of learning these kind of pieces. Great, so I'm gonna leave it there today. Let me know if you'd like me to make any more of this kind of videos of me, you know, practicing my pieces or more exercises or more scales, which I've done before. So I guess I'll see you next time. Keep practicing and I'll see you later.